Welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again with yet another DC Multiverse video, a Batman DC Multiverse video. We have an early look, courtesy of my friends over at McFarlane Toys, at their brand new Batman, but this time he originates from Nightfall, the classic 90s tale, and he's looking pretty bluish and grayish, which hey, I totally dig on my Batmans. Now you'll see on the side, Batman, Nightfall, the usual DC Multiverse box. And on the back side, you get some awesome artwork of Batman 492, Nightfall issue one, Doug Mensch, Norm Brayfogel. You get the idea. Here is the barcode for when these start to hit store shelves. They already went up for pre-order. I'll put pre-order links down in the description below in case they go up again. They kind of sold out real fast. But just keep in mind, you should start to see these in and around, uh, maybe trickle in the end of June, but more into July. So, in either case, this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is an early look at the brand new DC Multiverse Batman Nightfall by McFarlane Toys. And of course, here is everything taken out of the packaging. And what I like most about this Batman is that it's just Batman. It's a blue and a gray Batman. And McFarlane's definitely come a long way since wave one. The card art, never really talk about that. But I totally dig it. Utilizing Nightfall issue one. Now, this is Kelly Jones's Batman. The large ears, the very exaggerated proportions. The awesome Mad Hatter wouldn't mind a figure of that. But in the book, Batman was drawn so many different ways with so many different looking ears. You get the idea? Now, don't get me wrong. I would love a Kelly Jones Batman by McFarlane Toys. That would be awesome. So I hope to see that in the future. On the back side of the card, it's just a little bit about Bruce Wayne. Unfortunately, it doesn't delve into the actual Nightfall storyline. This particular Batman comes with two item holding hands. And what I love most is that there's no exaggerated lines, there's no texture, it's just flat blue. And I love it, along with a very simplified Batarang. I'm happy to say that this Batman, in all his newness glory, does hold it quite well. To show you, here is the black Batarang that came with the Amazon-exclusive Tim Drake Robin. The new blue one is just a tad smaller, but hey, it still does the trick, so I definitely dig it. And as far as the Batman figure goes, I'll save you some time. It's a really great Batman. I'm happy to say McFarlane Toys has certainly come a long way since their initial Wave 1 Batman 1000. This is every bit an 80s slash 90s looking Batman. And I like that the flesh paint for him looks great. They painted the lips. They have the eyes. And I like that you can see his nose when you kind of go underneath the mask a little bit. I kind of dig that. They nailed the bat symbol on his chest. And through and through, from the costume to the cape, everything all the folds all the wrinkles give it that extra sense of realism without going heavy-handed with all the textures and the gym lean lines they got the triangle boots he's got peg holes on the bottom the backside the cape it's got a little bit of a whoosh to it which i don't mind i would have loved a cloth cape we got a little spoiled with the recent Flash movie figures, right? On the backside, the yellow with the belts, with the blues. It's great. Now, depending on your understanding of Batman and what you like to see, maybe the gray would be a little bit too light. But I'm happy to say that the articulation really does work for this Batman. You get his arms all the way down. You got double jointed elbows, which look great. Kind of, sort of, right? <laughs> At least they work. And then you have the wrist, which I think with the new joints, they've really begun to utilize those well. It looks like wrinkles in the gloves instead of being a joint. Now, the one complaint, if I had any, would be that he doesn't have much of an ab crunch. He will certainly go back, but he won't go forward. If they could have done it just a little bit more, that would have been great. He does swivel. He swivels at the waist. Now, the yellow pill pouch belt is awesome. It's one of my favorite belts. They nailed it. The blue trunks, perfection. You get enough articulation out of the legs. It doesn't encompass the legs too much. Gives him a lot of articulation so he can kick high like Emma Peel. He's got double jointed knees. Doesn't have anything in the thigh. They didn't change that. He has nothing at the boots, but he does have, again, ankle, toe, the usual McFarlane Toys articulation. But this time around, it seems to mesh 
better. They didn't have these awkward cuts in the sculpt, which is really great, and I love that. Now, as far as the articulation in the head, you get left, right, up, down, you get the idea. Going up, looking up, he totally looks cool. Get the whole ab crunch going, you can get him going in every which direction. Looking down, doing the more brooding thing, it doesn't want to go down too much, and I wish it did just a little bit more, but that's really just a nitpick, not an all-out complaint. When you look at Batman from the Nightfall storyline, all three chapters, he was drawn every which way, every which color of the gray suit, every which color of the blues with the ears and everything else. This is to me, is a bit of an amalgamation. I love the ears on this guy. He's a little bit superpowers. He's a little bit 80s. He's a little bit 90s. But he's through and through a very good Batman, and that's what's most important. Especially when you look at DC Multiverse and the Batmans that have come before. These being an offering of what everyone seems to kind of gravitate towards for the Batman in their collection. You have the Blue Hush Batman, a little bit darker gray, the more teal blue is okay. I kind of like the grays of this. It kind of better matches the whole Nightfall storyline when you actually read the comic. Then you have the year two Batman, which again, 80s, little bit in the 90s. He's got the much taller ears, and I love the blues on him. So later, if McFarlane Toys wanted to then re-release this figure, give him a darker gray, maybe extend the ears, give him a new head portrait, a little bit more mad, I definitely would not mind that. And I love the height on this Batman. This Batman is what I think about when you match him up with, let's say, Superman, or you have the Tim Drake Robin, which, by the way, when the green one comes out, will look really good with this Batman. Batman should not be too big. He's not Superman size. But again, I like that they didn't overly texturize. They didn't put all those lines. He's got creases in the suit. He's proportioned well. He just looks good overall. And that's what I'm totally digging on. Now, in terms of Bane or Catwoman from the Nightfall storyline, again, Bane is huge honking monster, right? So he's going to tower over this Batman. But this Batman goes really well with this Catwoman, and that, to me, is one of the most important aspects. Bane, you can kind of have fun with it, you kind of go Kelly Jones with him a little bit, and that's really kind of where this Bane is at this point. Now, you can do the whole, I'm gonna break your back Batman pose, of course, but that's where a cloth cape really would have come in very nicely, right? Now, when you have, let's say, John Paul Valley. That particular Batman with this Batman, they definitely look good together. Jean-Paul's a little bit bigger, but you could kind of sort of say that this is Jean-Paul Valley as Batman as well. And again, later, if they wanted to do a variant and put the gauntlets from the Asbat suit on this Batman, I really wouldn't mind that either. In fact, I think that that would be quite a cool variant for a gold label, right? Now, just for bats and giggles... We can look at this Batman with, say, other members of the Bat family. Red Hood, you have Robin, you have Nightwing, and you have Batgirl. And again, I think this is a good height for this particular Batman. He does stand taller than all the other Bat family members, which is very important. But not necessarily matching up stylistically, time period, and everything else. But it's just a good Batman. And you have the villains. And that is important, too, because... You don't want certain villains being too much taller than Batman. When it comes to the Joker, the Joker can kind of go either way. Maybe a little bit shorter, if not as tall as Batman. So again, I think that in terms of the height to this particular new Batman figure, he will largely fit with all the DC Multiverse Batman villains. It has been an absolute blast seeing DC Multiverse McFarlane Toys really tackling the 90s. That's where I love to live with DC Comics. It's safe, it's inviting, and it's really what I understand. From the Nightfall storyline, to the death of Superman, to the Green Lantern saga, everything is really getting some attention, and I hope that they just continue. More and more, all these characters, all these looks, I love it. This new Batman is no exception. It does play it safe, it does look good, it's an amalgamation. If anything, you could kind of call it Night's End Batman, if we're being honest, but through and through, if you've been waiting for a blue and a gray Batman with just the right amount of articulation and just the right amount of accessories, 
look no further. I recommend this through and through. And thank you again to McFarlane Toys for sending this out for the purposes of this video. I'll leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, stay tuned. I got some more DC Multiverse always on the way. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.